Hello everyone and welcome to Daily Game Review number 2. In today's game we have Micah vs Sabiki, a 10Q vs a 9Q. In this game, it looks like we're going to have a interesting uh, game between a single digit Q and a double digit Q and see what is the difference between that 9Q and 10Q level. What does it take to get to, to break that barrier? And let's see if we can find that in this game. Again, I have not looked at this game, so I don't know what's going to happen, but uh, let's get started and find out. Alright, so black taking uh, a normal Kobayashi would be this, so kind of a Kobayashi -ish shape. Um, it looks like he wants to try and be a little bit more solid here, so that's an interesting idea. Uh, white playing uh, d6 um, high instead of low. Uh, I'm guessing he wants to deal with the influence a little bit more, but uh, yeah, so we'll see how that works out. Normally, though, um, you would see a low, and when black jumps, you could approach this corner, but with the high, you still owe one more move on the left side of the board. Okay, white approach is a normal approach. Normally, when this black stone is here, this move may be questionable due to the two space high pincer. For example, in the normal Kobayashi, if we approach like this, black can play a two space high pincer, and then when you play a normal Joseki like this, you can see this move. Is sente, and now that with a in combination with this stone, black doesn't have to fix. So black can actually jump up here and attack white very severely. So this is considered a little bit good for black. So normally you wouldn't approach high, but rather you would approach like this. And then there are several variations that can follow. How? But uh, in this game, you can see black. Uh, didn't play on the start point so I think it might change it a little bit but I'm not quite sure here so let's see how the game plays out ah black plays this move well instead of this move I think it would be better to go here because it's a little bit normal uh, more normal Joseki and it's a little bit faster uh, with this variation you could see it playing like this, and then black can get Sente to play elsewhere. However, with this move, I think it's a little bit slow because black isn't going to get as much, and he doesn't have as good surrounding options. So this move isn't quite Joseki. You could also still think about a pincer here, or a pincer here. <clears throat> so white chose to jump back and white chooses to pincer. If I was going to pincer, I would probably want to go here since it threatens to take white space with the follow-up and it's a bit more severe against the weak group uh, rather than <clears throat> here because it doesn't put as much pressure on these two white stones. However, I think this move is uh, more proper because not only does it take the base, it also gets several points in the corner. So I think this move is much better than uh, the pincer right now. White taking the base in the corner. And black Chinooki. I think it may be a little early to Chinooki since white has a follow up here and there's still some weakness here. I think I would still follow it up here. Now white is still unsettled. And since white's unsettled, white should probably still play another move. And uh, black also settled his own group in the corner and has good eye shape. So I think this is kind of vital for the weaknesses in this area and you want to kind of fix the weaknesses and deal with the weaknesses first before playing a big move. I always tell my students that if you're trying to find a move then first look for your own weaknesses. Fix your weaknesses first then look for your opponent's weaknesses and uh, attack your opponent's weaknesses and gain profit in Sente. Then you can play the big move. Uh, sometimes, even on that step two, it might not be Sente. However, getting profit by attacking a weak group is sometimes uh, is usually more valuable than uh, the biggest move on the board, due to the fact that you're getting it for free. When you're attacking, that means your opponent is having to defend. When your opponent has to defend, it means you're getting profit, or you should be getting profit for free. So, defending weakness and attacking weakness is bigger than the biggest move in most cases. This is true 
most of the time, I would say about 80% of the time, but in Go, there is no guarantee. So there's always exceptions. But in general cases, defending your weakness and uh, attacking your opponent's weakness for profit properly is usually bigger than the biggest move on the board. And if there's no weakness on the board, then playing the biggest move on the board is quite huge. All right, moving back to the game. So black decided to approach the corner up here. White again responds with a high. I think now is a good chance to split white and make these two uh, stones a little bit uncomfortable. Or he can jump back and just do his own thing. So black jumped back and uh, built his own position. White really should get this move now. So let's see if he does that. Uh, he tanukis. The reason is this move is uh, the follow-up for both of these corners. So without this follow-up, if Black gets a stone in this area, these two corners are going to look a little bit out of place because the 3-3 three, three is still open on both corners. So I think this move is quite important for White. So if White wants to play uh, on the top, I think he should play this way first. And when White jumps back, then maybe he could do something on top. Uh, or he could make a two-space jump here. But uh, I think playing high here and not playing this follow-up is a little bit uh, incorrect because uh, this position on the left is going to be a little bit uh, insecure. So white decides to invade. White, uh, black playing a natural shape. Uh, white not playing the natural follow-up here. Like this. But rather making a two-space jump here. I think this is a little bit not good since uh, it's kind of like touching your opponent's stone and you would rather play very lightly and loosely and get out quickly without giving your opponent too much. Here though, when black plays like this, you can see white is uh, really insecure and uh, not solid and there's also a lot of follow-ups to this white stone. And white doesn't really have a good follow-up. If white goes up, it's the honey ahead of two. And if white plays here, it's a double honey. So it looks pretty good for black and it looks like black's getting a, a good bit of profit. So I normally don't recommend the two space extension in this position, even with the Nobi. Um, but black decided to play the Tiger's Mouth here. Um, it's nice to see that he wants to punish the stone, but normally when your opponent touches your stone you want to respond. Uh, maybe 8 or 9 out of 10 times due to the fact that now this white stone is going to get free moves against this black stone and black could have easily gotten profit already. Uh, however white does not do that and now black got both. So this this is a quite, kind of interesting and I think it's a little bit good for black. White playing here I think white should play a little bit more loosely. Um, play faster get out more quickly. Uh, here it's going to be an easy honey, double honey. Uh, double honey is the shape here. You don't really have to worry about the cuts because even if white cuts uh, here and goes this way, you can just uh, jump like this, and it's fine. Uh, if white plays here and then here, he still has to come back and fix, and you can keep surrounding. You can see your thickness is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, Nobi's not as powerful as the double honey, but uh, I guess it's still okay. I uh, would really like a honey here, but maybe he's worried about the cuts. Um, okay, take the tiger's mouth. It's fine. And now you can see black getting profit on top. Uh, I'm not sure about the sane because uh, I think you can cut this. But maybe it's a little bit overplayed because uh, white white has good eye shape on top. However, it still may be quite powerful. If he doesn't, then uh, I guess just defending's fine. And white shapes doesn't look good. And uh, black got quite a big corner. So black got plenty of profit here. So, so far what I see is... Um, in the bottom right, Black didn't know this Joseki, but that's a, you can fix that simply by looking it up after the game. If you ever encounter a Joseki you do not know, make sure you always look it up after the game in order to learn it for the future. You don't have to learn every single variation at one time, 
but try to learn the most basic variations and then try and remember it for next time. This way, whenever you encounter something, then uh, if you don't know it and you look it up afterwards, you'll hopefully have some type of mental reference for the future. Even if you don't remember the exact variations, you can more or less get an idea of what's supposed to happen. And if you mess it up a couple times, then look it up each and every time, and then eventually you'll remember it. Um, so that's a simple way to fix mistakes like these where you play just like you don't know. Um, as for the rest of the game, it looks like White's been the only one besides this bottom right corner who has played some strange moves. Um, White played these two high moves. I don't think they're working together, so I think White needs to realize that uh, this high stone wants to come down. Fourth line wants to come down to the third line. Um, additionally, his defense on top looks like he's trying to play quickly, but actually it's worse than if he had just played the normal variation. So try not to overthink it. When you invade your opponent's area, you're going to get attacked. That's how it works. If you think the attack is too good for your opponent, then maybe the invasion is the right move. Or maybe you can try a different invasion like the 3-3 or something. However, trying to place uh, the way he did is actually putting him in a worse position than what he should have had. So I think Black's moves were kind of easy uh, to respond with. And... Blackgate was able to get a lot of profit kind of for free because White just didn't defend properly. So I think Black just needs to uh, look up this Joseki and remember to look up any Joseki he doesn't know. And White needs to review professional games to see how they defend and how they attack and how do they deal with large areas and stuff like that. Uh, professional games is really good for studying attack and defense and uh, basic shapes. If you look up uh, recent Korean games, they may be a little bit too complicated for you. So, uh, and they may have very, very deep reading. If those don't make sense to you, try reviewing a couple hundred year old Japanese games. I would say anything after Ghost Sagan's time or anything after the Star Point has been played uh, regularly. Uh, that way you can see not just the 3-4 points, but the star points as well as the 3-4 points. And then try and see how the shapes work, how the attack and defense works. Uh, Japanese, um, several decades to 100, uh, 100 years ago or so, um, is very, very nice for studying shapes and uh, basic proper moves. Uh, you could say they're the most beautiful looking games. Um, but uh, the Korean games are also really, really strong. They're just a lot more difficult to follow and understand. So if you want to learn some basic shapes, I would recommend reviewing older Japanese games. All right, so that's uh, what I see so far. So let's see how the rest of the game is going to play out. So Black uh, does come over here and split this left side. So you can see that now these two stones are kind of unsure of what they're supposed to do. White, still invading. Uh, I think this is a little bit overplay. I think White is trying too hard to destroy all of his opponent's area. He needs to defend now because now he has two uh, groups here that don't have a base because Black can invade the 3-3 and then you don't have a base and you're getting surrounded. So uh, if Black had this stone, it would be a lot easier to Tanuki here. So, But uh, White needs to be very careful. White's getting too many weaknesses at one time. Black uh, trying to defend. White uh, again playing uh, kind of loosely. I think defending here is fine. I don't think you need to be too severe here. I think you just defend yourself and Tanuki. Get Sente and Tanuki. I think it's good enough. White uh, trying to keep connected. Uh, Black going to make a base. I think this move is important. It's white space and black space. I think this move's kind of important. And if white tries to split or something, then you can think about this. That's fine. But uh, get some, get your eye shape first. White to new king again. Is this Sente? I mean, it's quite large. It is quite large. So let's see, if black plays f here, white plays here, 
black, white, black just defends. So white has five, six, seven, seven and a half maybe. And black, if he responded here, has a uh, five, six, seven, eight. So about a 15 point move. But isn't this also a 15 point move or more? Because it attacks these two white stones? I think this is urgent over here. Yeah, I think this whole left side of the board is urgent. I don't know if it's a time to be playing over here. Um, but uh, black responds. Uh, this is a little bit more Aji than I want to deal with. I don't. I think this is fine, and then just get back over here. But uh, black trying to get as much as he can. So that's an interesting idea. If you're going to respond, try and get as much as you can. Uh, there's going to be Aji here for sure, but maybe it's okay. But uh, I think I would have attacked the weakness on the left. It's quite big over there. White making a base here. Black taking the base here. Now you can see these two white stones are not in a good position. However, this black stone is a little bit worse off than it should have been. Because remember, black could have gotten that move. So I think this black stone's a little bit lost for black. Um, black going here. I think I would probably... Maybe just go here. Attack these two stones now. Take the base of both of them. If white defends, keep just push in. And when white goes here, you can easily go here. I mean, just do this and you take all the points, right? Uh, so he wants to he wants to attack this group kind of severely. So this is an interesting idea. Um, this is fi also fine, I think. Uh huh. White trying desperately to counterattack, but White needs to be very careful here. White wanting to counterattack with a very weak group, and Black still has plenty of eye shape, and White doesn't. So I think White needs to be very careful here. Okay, so he finally runs out. Black coming up here and attacking these two stones now. Uh, I did consider this as well, but I'm worried that this group is not completely alive since uh, once White lived over here, this is now thickness. And there's only this for base, so that's why I kind of want to re wanted to reduce instead. But uh, let's see how this plays out. White goes here. Jump is an easy response. Uh, is that necessary? Hard to say. Maybe he's worried. Uh, I think you could go here though if you're worried. I think it's a little bit better because I don't. Normally you don't want to push into a Kosumi. Uh, white responds. So, is that? Oh, he defends anyway. Then you should have just done this without this exchange. And black coming back to take the profit. White jumps. Now black needs to be careful here. But if black's careful, black should have a lot more territory than white. I would not tanuki here. You're gonna win as long as these two groups live. Just make sure they live because they're not completely alive right they don't have exactly two eyes yet so I would definitely not be tanukiing here and this is quite important for saving this group and also this group's not settled either so it's also an attack I think this jump here is quite important I would definitely 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 not be run, uh, jumping here Okay, so white plays this move, and white's responding too. Both players ignoring the big weaknesses on the left. Um, and now white finally getting back to it, so it's going to be a bit dangerous. However, black has an e uh, having an easy time defending, and white gets this around on this group. Uh, not quite the way to live. This is the vital point. I think this uh, this just lives. This may also live. I'm just a little bit worried if white gets this move. 
maybe. Uh, definitely maybe now. So if White goes here, he threatens to connect. And there's this Atari here. Actually, no, don't even do that. Just Atari here. I think what Black's gonna die. I think Black might die. If he goes here, this is an easy response. I think Black's gonna die. I think Black didn't defend properly. Oh, I did play here. Black played here. Uh oh. This is a complete misread. Ah, Black, you need more life and death. Black definitely needs more life and death if uh, playing here is just, there's no way this will work. Yeah, definitely need more life and death. He died in Gote. Oh, wow. Death in Gote, even. Actually, hold up. Wait, wait, isn't this Sente? Yeah, this is Sente, isn't it? This is Sente, isn't it? Let's see if Black sees it. No, no, no one's seeing it, no one's seeing it. So, if Black plays here... No, there's no way that works. There's no way that works. Okay, sorry. Complete misery, complete misery. Sorry about that. So it is Death and Gote. It is Death and Gote. Because it's three liberties, two liberties. No way it can lose. But I'm trying to find a way to make a second eye here. So white plays here. Is there any way to make a second eye in this area? I don't think so. I don't think so. So here, here. Yeah, there's nothing, right? This isn't even in one eye. There's no Tsuji. Black died. And Black died in Gote. So, definitely black needs some more life and death. Uh, yeah, yeah. So white, finally getting some territory because black's a little misread there. But black should have lived. So actually, black has played much better than white this entire game. So you can see that uh, the difference between a 10Q and 9Q is actually not that much. I think uh, the reason Black's doing or Black did so well before he died was because he has basic shapes, basic uh, way of playing, and White seems like he's just unsure of what he's doing. So I'm thinking White's only a 9Q because he confuses his opponent and then outreads him in local area fighting. But uh, Black did very nice up until the left side um, and just dealing with the basic shapes and getting good territory and just attacking properly and playing properly. So remember, even if you face these uh, confusing opponents that uh, you're unsure of what they're doing, you can still win just by sticking to basics and playing basic shapes and uh, playing basic responses. Uh, however, you do have to be careful because these opponents are their level for a reason. And if it's not because they know how to make territory and it's not because they know how to play basic shapes, and then it's probably because of their local area reading. And so you have to be careful about that. So the left side, you needed really accurate reading, and uh, if you had lived, you would have just won. But uh, remember, all these moves in the center um, should like should have just defended the weakness, right? If Black would have just jumped out, it would have been so much easier, and there would then there would have been no life and death, right? So actually, I think uh, Black kind of brought this on himself by tanuking it several times over, and then not even playing the proper vital point. So remember, defend your weaknesses before playing a big move. The weaknesses are very important. White, trying to come back and uh, deal with this area. Black playing here to get some center. But uh, let's see, is this the time for that? Um, still some questions on the bottom. I'm not sure how important this move is. I mean, it's several points, but uh, 
I think a move like this is more valuable. And maybe you can even get an attack off here. So several things to think about in the lower right, I think. Okay. So white oh, or black does he get this move? Black trying to play a Tsuji, but it looks like it's overplay. White ignoring. Completely ignoring. Um, so if white plays here, black clamps, white plays here. How to connect? I don't see a way to connect. Black may try this, but then black might die. Actually, just go here. Three liberties to four liberties, so black extends. Now white plays here. And even if black plays here, you can just Atari. Atari. Now it's four to four, and now white can play here. So I think black, uh, black may have misread this a bit. White, however, wanting to connect. Black coming back and defending and getting the good end game. Uh, I would go here because uh, that way this responding here isn't Sente. Uh, and you really want Sente in the end game. You really want to get those Sente moves. So every chance you get, you want to uh, take Sente. Um, like reducing the center point here to kind of make it Dame. It's an okay idea. And I think white only has the left side. I think black should still be ahead in this board. Uh, playing a couple dynamo moves. This move isn't important because uh, black has good eye shape, right? Black doesn't need to connect yet. Maybe he's worried about his eye shape. So that may be why he's defending. But I think he should be okay. But maybe... Maybe this is okay. Maybe this is okay. If he's worried and he's winning, then okay, maybe it's okay to fix. White trying to reduce the center. Black pushing the Kosumi once again. Uh, normally you want to play like this, especially since the Kosumi gives a free Atari. Um, let's see where to play. Uh, just something like this is fine. Don't respond to that Atari. That Atari's not important. That's very small. Uh, something like this is much bigger. Uh, even this. And this. And this. All of that's bigger than that one stone. That's one stone. Don't connect one stone in the end game. Okay, white place here. Fix. Uh, there's no reason to one point jump against the white stone, just defend like this. And it should be okay. Even if white tries to cut. Or, uh, yeah, you, you can just make an eye here, right? Cut's not really important. You can even get some forcing moves on this white group. And then maybe get some free moves in the center. Who knows? But uh, one point jump against the white stone just leaves unnecessary Aji. Especially when you ignore it. Mm hmm. See, he do even he doesn't want to respond to the stone, but that's why you should have uh, fixed it earlier. I wouldn't respond here. If you're going to fix, fix here. This is a common sequence, or an easy, I think this is a simple to read sequence. It's a 1, 2, 3, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There's no way white can win this. You could even think to just uh, go here, white jumps, play here, and then honey. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And what you need to do if you're worried that you can't read something like this is uh, play a basic sequence out. And instead of trying to read every move, 
just uh, get to a point where it's easy enough to count the liberties. If you can count the liberties, it makes uh, reading a capturing race far more easier. Um, of course, there are times we have to take into account uh, liberty stealing to Sujis and stuff like that. But um, in most simple cases, like something like this, it's uh, easy enough to read that uh, black has more liberties than white. And black has eye shape and white doesn't, so black has even more liberties than white. So there's no way uh, this cut will work. And I think we just get into endgame. And black overplaying a bit and losing some points. Uh, simple enough stuff. All right, and I think black should be ahead, so let's look at the result. Black wins by 17 and a half points. So, kind of, um yeah, about what I uh more or less estimated that black was a good bit ahead because white only had that dead group. And remember, if that dead group had lived, why would it had next to nothing compared to black? I mean, if this group this group was pretty much White's only significant territory, the other stuff is just a few little points that he got here and there. But Black had a huge corner profit in the top right, and uh, the whole bottom uh, right corner was his to begin with. And White didn't get anything in exchange there; he just invaded. But when he invaded, he stole White's corner in the exchange, so White never got that corner. Um, so Black had a t the top right. He was able to get the top left as well and the top left corner. He destroyed the bottom left corner and he still had the bottom right corner a little bit and white never really got anything in exchange until black died. So if black had just lived or defended himself much earlier on or played the proper the vital point in the shape, it would have become much easier to win. He would It would have just been basically completely one-sided. I mean, it's still kind of one-sided, but here white has some territory. Why would it had just next to nothing? So I think Black is actually doing, actually did really well. He just needs to start throwing some life and death problems into his daily routine. Uh, just doing like 15 minutes of life and death or 10 minutes of life and death, five to 10 problems a day. Uh, just do five problems a day, even if you, you can't do that. Um, and if you can't do that, just do two problems uh, whenever you can. Just do like maybe one problem in the morning, one problem in the evening, or one problem after lunch, or one problem while you're eating. If you can add up to like about five a day, that's still five life and death problems a day. That's more than uh, like 25 a week if you just do weekdays. Or if you just do weekdays, 25 a week, then uh, 35 if you do it every day of the week. But uh, I normally tell my students to, if you don't want to work on the weekends, it's alright to relax a little bit. Don't overwork yourself. So you could think just doing five a day during weekdays whenever you have a chance like maybe one or two during breakfast one during lunch one or two before you go to bed something like that that's five problems a day that's 25 problems a week that's a hundred problems a month that adds up very quickly and it's really really good for training your uh, eyes to read life and death and see vital points uh, more quickly and more efficiently and that'll fix stuff like this the little skirmishes like this and also defending your weaknesses before you play those big moves or before you play these center dame moves would have prevented the entire life and death situation to begin with. So I think that's what Black really needs to do is throw some life and death problems into um, into his daily routine. Uh, White, uh, I think White has a lot more to work on. White really needs to start reviewing pro games. His life and death is okay because he, he saw the vital point. So I think uh, the life and death is probably what uh, black needs to get to the single digit Q level is the life and death because you saw white easily played the vital point in the shape. So I think white's reading was a, a bit above black's. However, his ability to defend his own weaknesses, his ability not to overplay because remember he invaded the bottom when he still had two weaknesses on the left. Uh, so his ability to understand the basic positions, what needs to happen his direction of play, his basic shapes, all of that really needs work. And I think that's a lot harder to work on than just doing simple life and death problems. So I think Black definitely had the upper hand in this game. 
and White really needs to start reviewing pro games and uh, st uh, start maybe even getting teaching games uh, a couple times during the w each week and just uh, review like two or three pro games a day. And I think that should help White to learn his basic shapes and uh, get a feeling for the direction of play. Um, also, I think it can be a mentality that uh, people are afraid of their opponents making points. I think it's okay to lose a bit uh, to your opponent getting more territory than you if you're playing properly. I think it's more important to get good habits first and then you can figure out, okay, what is the proper timing? I was invading too soon before and I wasn't getting anything and my opponent's still getting everything. So now I'm going to focus on getting stuff and let my opponent do what he wants. Okay, now my opponent's getting too big. So somewhere in between of me getting stuff and him getting stuff, there should be a reduction or invasion and start really focusing and pinpointing that timing of when you should invade and when you should reduce versus when you should just build your own stuff because remember this game is about exchanges making exchanges with your opponent you can't destroy all of your opponent's territory you have to sometimes let your opponent get something so you can get something and then you're going to want to uh, try and find those exchanges that give you one or two points profit at a time uh, if you can get those and get a little bit more than your opponent at the t uh, at a time, then you're going to eventually have more points than your opponent, and you're going to win. That's basically what your end goal is. However, you have to really get on that timing, and I think it's a lot easier to learn to invade, uh, get the getting the timing down to learn to invade later rather than sooner. Because uh, if you're over invading like this, I think it's going to be much harder for you to learn the basics. So I think White really needs to buckle down and start reanalyzing his games, getting them reviewed by stronger players, um, cu uh, cutting back on the invasions a little bit, and uh, start working on the timing of those, and review pro games. Get an idea of how to defend properly, how to make those good shapes, and how to make your own territory when your opponent's also making territory. And don't be afraid if your opponent gets something. I think that's not uh, something you should be afraid of. Your opponent has to get something, right? I mean, both players are playing stones on the board. As long as both players are doing something, both players are going to get something. So it's all about getting more than your opponent, not uh, preventing your opponent from getting anything. That's just going to backfire. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed that, and uh, that's it for this day's uh, daily game review, and uh, I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Until then.